All right, that was a short clip for PCDC that's going on. So finally, we start the program. I welcome you all to the second day of Pink City Design Confluence, Form, Reform, Transform. The Confluence seeks to create an interface between education and industry sectors to debate on how design technology education can be leveraged to support the emerging economies of the world. This is our first session of research paper panel with the theme Society 5.0. We have five presenters for the session who are definitely going to give all of us an enriching experience. And to moderate the program, we have Dr. Lakshmi Murthy on the panel. I welcome you on behalf of Arch College of Design and Business, ma'am. Dr. Lakshmi Murthy is a designer, researcher, and educator. She's the founder of Vikalp Design and co-founder Jatan Sanstan, an NGO. Your work is truly inspiring, ma'am. Lastly, every presenter is going to have seven minutes for presenting and three minutes are going to be there for question and answer. We'll all keep in mind to adhere to the time. Without further ado, let's get started. Over to you, Lakshmi, ma'am. Thank you, Deepshika, for that warm, warm welcome. And welcome to all the presenters today, all the uh, five, we have five presenters today. And uh, there's always an adrenaline kind of rush before you present. And I'm sure you're all going through that. And uh, best of luck, it will go well. Don't worry about it because you worked hard to put that paper together. So when you worked hard to put the paper together, usually the presentation always goes well. So it'll be fine. So, uh, Oh, so the other thing that I have to uh, reiterate what this Deep, Deepshika said, please stick to your time and I will need Deepshika's help to remind the presenters after say five minutes or is it six minutes? What should we say? Just to give the presenters a reminder that now the time is coming to a close. Deepshika, what should we do? Should we give it at six minutes and give them a little heads up? You've got one minute left, something like that. So we can do that. And uh, well, there are a variety of papers that's going to be presented today. There's a, there's a paper on airports, uh, a paper on Khadi, a paper on gender neutrality, a paper on uh, some tribal jewelry, and I think I'm missing out something. Then there's a paper on menstrual waste. And uh, interestingly, menstrual waste is happens to be my area of work. So I'm just looking forward to that particularly. Uh, not to say that I'm not looking forward to the others, but yeah, somehow uh, when a moderator looks at the range of papers, then you just spot the one that, oh, this is, this is close to my work. So that's how it's going to be. So uh, should I, uh, I have a list that the college has given. Uh, and so we will go in that sequence. So Shifali Yadav and Isha Bhatt, this is their paper now. And uh, their paper is about Hindu mythological designs in airports and the meaning behind it. So a little about Shifali. She is an assistant professor, faculty of design at Pandit Lakshmi, Lakmi or Lakshmi. I am not sure what that is. So you can correct us. Lakshmi Chand Lakshmi. Universe, Universe, State it's University. It's Lakmi Chand, ma'am. Lakmi. Lakmi Chand. Okay. Yes. Lakmi Chand State University of Performing and Visual Arts in Rotak. And she's also a research scholar at uh, Banastali Vidya Peet. Uh, the, uh, the other person uh, presenting this paper is Isha Bhatt. I'm not sure if she's there today, but her she's done her master's in textile designing and a PhD in textile designing, a specialization in, a specializing in printing. Uh, Isha has 13 years of experience in the field of design and is currently an assistant professor at the Department of Design, Banastali Vidya Peet. So we will begin right away with the first paper which is Hindu mythological designs in airports and their meaning behind it. So over to you. Okay, um, ma'am, I'm trying to share my screen, but it's coming that host disabled the participant to share screen sharing. Yeah. Shika, you will have to give her sharing, sharing rights. It's done. They're saying that it's done. So just please try again. Okay, okay. Um, is it visible? Yes. Okay. Let's see. 
Okay, so my topic is Hindu mythological designs in airports of India and meanings behind it. I am doing PhD uh, similar to this topic and I have done a part of my research I have put uh, in this research paper. So it's a secondary research and my mentor Dr. Isha Bhatt and I have done this uh, research paper together. Uh, so abstract, I'll give you a little brief about my topic in this. Uh, the, uh, our physical environment is constantly influencing our emotions and general well-being. And sometimes we aren't of aware of it, that how it's influencing, but it influences us all the time. And ex according to experts, interiors have a great impact on attitudes of people working in it, as it is a combination of science and arts both. A perfect interior design helps in enhancing the quality of life. And the theme, uh, the colors used in interiors always affect our behavior and moods, our uh, efficiency as a person. And uh, S. Carr explains that places are proposed, built, and assessed uh, by the people who, uh, who are the main clients, uh, who are space designers, and they don't sometimes they don't address the people's needs who are being stakeholders and who are going to use it. Uh, at that time, so uh, sometimes they don't uh, serve the needs of the people. So amidst all the announcements, cues, checking and boarding, there are other lot more emotions and thoughts that the passenger go through, a uh, lot more emotions that they carry them when they enter the airport. And uh, nowadays, ex uh, airports are changing the experience of travelers and tourists by art and architecture, as we are also seeing when we go to the airport, a lot of changes are happening in the decor and a lot more attention is, uh, has been, uh, is being paid on the decor. So design components are considered as the visual dialogue and status part uh, for understanding diversion, culture, religion, and tradition of a country. And uh, it can be best expressed uh, through the airports because airports are the first and last glimpse which a passenger carries with, uh, uh, with which, what a traveler carries with them when they go and when they come to India. So uh, the study investigates the matters that professionals take into consider uh, consideration when designing and making decisions about airports with Hindu mythological decor, architecture, and meanings behind it. It covers airports of Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, and Mumbai. It uh, also explores the features of public spaces that are significant, incidental, or destructive within a social, environmental, physical context. Uh, this study is significant as it provides professionals a practical guide that can be utilized to assist in the design of places that are sensitive to natural responses of people. So I think let's start with the introduction now. Uh, uh, art has amazing ability to create uh, delight during passengers' journey through the uh, airport, which will provide a bit of wonder to otherwise mundane uh, act of uh, bo boarding a flight. Airports are important platforms for local tourism sectors to promote a country's economic capacity and attractiveness as a destination. On an average, starting from arrival to the aircraft, a passenger spends 133 minutes in an airport. It's average time. The most important activities like security check and boarding often takes 20% of passengers. Uh, just a minute, Shifali, if you've changed the slide, we are not seeing the next slide. Okay, uh, I have uh, changed it. Uh, is it not visible? No, the first slide is frozen on the first. Oh, one second. Yeah, it's frozen on the first slide. I'll share again once. Um, is it visible now, ma'am? Uh, Go on the next. Yes, it's visible now. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the, mo the most important activities like security. Shall I repeat or shall I start from where I uh, ended lastly? Oh, you can you can just carry on from here. Yeah, okay. I'm going to make that. Um, so uh, the other 80% is known as uh, discriminatory time in which they enjoy airport facilities and it can be provided that it is associated with positive feelings such as excitement expectation because the earlier time when they have to board a flight, they have to go through security ch uh, check. At that time, the passenger is a little bit tensed about uh, the weight and other thing, other stuff and timing. But after that, they become a little, uh, little relaxed. Uh, the airport of the city is capable of telling several stories either directly or subtly. It can uh, uh, talk about the wealth of a country along with its history, culture, and traditions. So um, significance of airport design, it's the first cultural connection and final lasting impression for a passenger. For connecting flight passengers, uh, airport serves as the only experience one can have of the city. 
the main purpose of indoor decor at the airport is to keep the people occupied and experience leisure uh, after performing all the customs. The choice material used, furniture and lighting might transform that atmosphere completely. The customs are considered as irksome by passenger. The decor should be calming and logical in its layout and easy to use. According to your five minutes are done, uh, you can continue oh. accordingly. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll just uh, I'll come to uh, the main thing, uh, which is uh, how mythology is being used in this uh, in the decor of uh, Indian airports. So in Bangalore, the Bangalore asked artists to uh, give submit their artworks. And uh, for that, they uh, conducted a kind of competition in 2020. And in that, uh, they selected few artworks. I'm only showing the uh, artworks they selected, which are related to mythology. One is Ashta Mangala, which is displayed here. Uh, it, is, uh, it, is, it has been conceived by Siddhartha Das. It showcases the rich South Indian cultural heritage. The artwork combines two traditional art forms, Mysuru painting with a focus on Hindu god Vishnu and Chola style bronze sculptures, as you can see in the picture, uh, which are placed in front of the painting. And uh, it, uh, it, is, it has been done to give a welcoming atmosphere for the passengers. And another one is band, um, by many beats, one dance. Basically, they, when they conducted this competition, the main idea and main uh, purpose was to uh, gather the artworks which are related to, uh, which are related to traditions of India, which show cultural diversity of India. So another one is many beats, one dance. This is also a very beautiful mural. It, uh, it shows a uh, Kathakali dance form in the middle, and then it shows the uh, traditional uh, hand gestures which are used in the dance form. And uh, the color scheme, the cement that binds the colorful mosaic tiles characterize the beautiful shapes of Mother Earth, nails, wires, ropes. Uh, and uh, it also tells the stories uh, from Mahabharata, Bhagavata, and Ramayana. And then the third one is protecting the heritage. The painting shows the cultural heritage of India. The figure, as you can see, uh, uh, it's shown below. A uh, person in the first panel is... Bali, your seven minutes for presentation are up. Okay. I think they went quite fast. I was not expecting this soon. <laughs> okay. So what you do is just, just do next, next, next with your okay. slides. So, this so we just the Chennai have a look at your slides. Yeah. Yeah, this one is Chennai Airport. Um, yeah, just go next now. Culture. This is Delhi, as okay. most, most of us have visited. This is Mumbai Airport. It got designed this 55 person. Yeah, don't say anything. Just don't say anything. Just just okay. do next, next. Yeah. Okay, this is the conclusion. I have uh, uh, done four or four of India. Yeah. yeah, great. Okay, thank you, Shifali. Uh, now to the other presenters, a little tip. Uh, spend a little less time on the introduction. The first speaker, as uh, you know, always becomes yes. the Shaheed. You know the market? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it sets the stage for the rest. So don't worry about it, Shifali. And I don't know by default, I'm always the first speaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was wonderful. And uh, uh, Deepshika, are we throwing open the questions now? Or do we yes, ma'am. Yes. We're throwing open the questions now. Yes. So to the audience who's listening in, uh, any questions for Shifali? It was a very colorful presentation indeed with all the... Uh, yeah, because uh, I tried you know. to uh, use the colors which are related to Indian mythology. That's nice. Galas and everything. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, any questions from the audience? There's something in the chat. Okay, slides are not changing. Uh, no questions No questions in the Q&A? Not yet, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, well, I will start you off with one question. Uh, in in the in the other airports, you've just done. I think you've just uh, shown us four airports, right? Yes, just no. just curious to know in the other airports, uh, is it also Hindu mythology, or is there some other, or have they showcased actually, something? Ma uh, actually, ma'am, uh, the Buddhism culture is also very much there in the airports. Like in Lucknow Airport, there is Buddha sculpture and uh, other things. But uh, in some of them, there are uh, Islamic mythology as well, but not much of it. Uh, majorly, it's Hindu mythological decor, which I have seen, and I am doing my PhD on this very on this very topic, and it's about how human behavior changes when you uh, enter a space which is Hindu mythological decor. 
So it's little psychological uh, also, my PhD and PhD topics. So for that, and airports of India. So are you then saying that if there is some other culture, then that doesn't happen, it's just Hindu? Yeah, no, no, no. I, it will change. Yeah, this. Okay. Uh, my PhD will become very broad then. So I have to. Okay, keep... so you're just looking at the Hindu. Yeah, yeah so I have to, to do in depth research. I am taking this and I'm taking only mm. airports as well because can't cover each and every one of them. Of course, of course, I'm of course. Go for ethnographic research personally. So that's why I'm not covering all of them. But yeah, and I have also covered, I'm also covering five uh, uh, air, uh, hotels like Ashoka, ITC Grand, and yeah. Okay. I'm just, so when I, I will at least look forward to your final work because it's looking yeah. very promising. Yeah, I, I think very promising. Fingers 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 fingers. I'll, I'll try sharing it with you after doing it. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, is uh, any other questions from even the other speakers who are here? So Deep has raised his hand. Uh, is there anything that you wish to ask? Yeah. So Deep. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to ask that uh, she showed me uh, one. Uh, showed us one. Uh, the Shiva Nataraja sculpture, no? Yes. And uh, I think it it was not uh, uh, Chola bronze. So what kind of from which uh, uh, you know style uh, you know uh, the sculpture is? Which one, uh, sir? Actually, the Shiva. Uh, Shiva Nataraja. Chennai, Chennai airport, I think it's... Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's from Chennai airport. It's a very uh, big structure. Shall I share the slide again once to show? Yeah, the, that was not uh, Shiva Nataraja, but the Shiva Nataraja we know is basically that the Chola bronze, that the popular one. I okay, think that, okay. Yeah, so Actually, I just wanted uh, to know. Okay, one second, sir. I'm, I, I'll also check it for you. Um. So uh, it's uh, from Tamil Nadu. Uh, I think it's from Tamil Nadu airport, uh, the one you are talking about. And uh, it is uh, it is it has been designed by uh, an art gallery in Tamil Nadu, and they have uh, I, I think they have not used I think uh, the traditional material. They have used something which is uh, more uh, you know it is easy to keep, easy to maintain because while it's outside the airport, it's not inside the airport. Okay, uh, so your time is up for the question and answers sure. as well. We'll uh, Lakshmi, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we'll so uh, thanks a lot, thanks a lot, Chipali. So we okay, move now you. to uh, Simran Deep Kaur. Simran Deep Kaur is a research scholar at IIS. Can you tell us, Simran Deep, what is IIS? Ma'am, uh, it's a uh, uh, good morning to everyone, first of all. And it's uh, the International College for Girls. It's basically ah. ICG and uh, the university, IIS University. It's a deemed university in Jaipur. Okay, great. Uh, so this is in Jaipur and she's pursuing her PhD in fashion technology. And earlier, she uh, was the assistant professor at Chandigarh University. And her, the, the, what she's going to speak about uh, this morning is about Khadi and the way to rejuvenate the status of Khadi from being traditional to modern. So it's, she's uh, trying to see what happens to Khadi in the contemporary context. So Simrandeep, over to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, is my screen visible, ma'am? Would you like to make it uh, full screen? Yes, yes, yes. Just a second. Yeah. Is my screen visible? Perfect. Yes, perfect. I'm also starting my please timer so that I will be intimated. <laughs> yes. Yes, please uh, adhere to the given time. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, so the topic of my presentation is a way ahead to reju rejuvenate the status of Khadi from being traditional to modern. Uh, we all know that, uh, I'll just start with the introduction, that Khadi is basically hand-spun and hand-woven cotton fabric. The fabrication of Khadi is an exceptionally sensible activity which focuses on environment. Uh, uh, just a second, actually, I am not... Okay, okay. So... Uh, So Khadi repre represents our heritage tradition which was inspired from contemporary times and each tradition has experienced little changes to remain pertinent. Despite being fabric of India, Khadi is still facing many problems in terms of from the mass Government and Khadi institution make Khadi fabric for one and all, but still have been adopting new techniques, technologies in terms of modern designing, universal apparel, etc. 
so moving forward the objectives of my study is to analyze present scenario of khadi apparel to analyze and study the consumer perception towards khadi apparel and to suggest measures to enhance and promote khadi so in the methodology i have selected haryana and punjab and 1500 respondents 750 male and 750 female were selected and awareness and satisfaction regarding khadi apparel has been analyzed so the data of my study reveals that uh, Uh, that most of the male and female were aware of khadi apparel uh, most of the time uh, male uh, they doesn't wear, uh, prefer to wear khadi as wear khadi on occasionally and the purchase frequency of khadi fabric is uh, it, there, there is no special reason for them to purchase khadi it is just random purchasing and for the satisfaction regarding web a uh, variety of fabrics available in khadi uh, we can see that from the data that uh, most of the male were not satisfied whereas female were satisfied and for the texture of khadi 52.7% male were not satisfied while females were satisfied with the 53.9 percentile and for the weave of khadi uh, males were not satisfied um, majority of the male and while the females 58.7% females were satisfied regarding the designing patterns Uh, both male and female majority of them were not satisfied with the designing patterns available in khadi in the khadi sale outlets uh, for the customer satisfaction of uh, various pet parameters like price of khadi uh, ready made apparel uh, most of the responses shows a neutral response regarding price the ambience and infrastructure of khadi sale outlets locality of khadi sales outlets and customer dealing at khadi sales outlets where the number little fluctuate between uh, locality of khadi sales outlets and customer dealing in male and female and uh, if the question was asked to the respondents whether they wear uh, khadi as a substitute for normal clothing so most of the male and no, there are no options available in khadi uh, the variety is very less the designing is very less and uh, if they prefer khadi as buying choice if more variety available in khadi so most of the respondents said yes whether in male or female uh the findings of my study reveals that as compared to other fabrics khadi has been an image of being simple traditional and plain among the consumers nowadays khadi is becoming a fashionable fabric but still it is not much popular among mass population especially youngsters and teenagers the attitude of consumers is changing towards khadi from the past they are seeking for new designs innovations in organic and eco friendly garments and khadi is improving its way to meet the consumer desires most of the young and educated consumers have high level of outlook towards khadi goods various studies reveal that designing in khadi apparel is limited to its surface embellishment such as patchwork thread embroidery uses of beads sequences and application of dyeing techniques uh, there are some facts about khadi that designers are also doing their best practices in creating new designs but are limited to reach of elite class only a lot of studies has been done on khadi designs experiments innovative techniques have been used but still deep innovation in quality design or pattern have never introduced by many as there is no pressure to innovate the variety of khadi fabric and ready made apparel available in stores is very limited due to its colors and designs so there is the ready made apparel in khadi store is very limited the design not the demand to this scenario ready made apparel available in the stores are old fashioned and does not attract consumers resulting in dissatisfaction of the customer so when we see khadi in the glamorous world a lot of designers are experimenting with various cuts styles silhouettes but the unique texture of khadi restricts its use in so designing can be in so this is the Uh, these are some actors of to some exhibition or actual uh, the your five khadi. minutes are over you have two more minutes to yes, present yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am wind up so this is the ready made apparel when we go to the exhibitions and the stores the designs are very limited um, female kurtis there and some of jackets and kurtas with basket jackets are there so these are some expectations versus reality khadi on the left side we can see the glamorous uh, modern look of the stores and on the right side we can see what actual khadi retail stores are and these are some of the challenges of khadi 
the sales outlets regarding clearance of, of old stock, unsold stocks to create awareness among consumers to innovate in and techniques, customer service and experience and recognizing customer. This is the conclusion that khadi should be promoted as an environment friendly product in order to increase sales of ready-made khadi apparel. Innovation and designing can lead to attract more customers toward khadi. More emphasis should be given on customer preferences rather product development. The display and store outlook of khadi sales outlets should be improvised as the of are as it helps in engaging customers and creating brand image. As compared to today's high-tech marketing strategies, ma marketing and promotional activities adopted by khadi institutions should be enhanced to attract the customer. Distribution of product, pricing of products, utilization of the space, proper lighting, location plays important role in attracting customers and increasing sales. Display of products help in engaging customers and creating brand image. These are some of the suggestions which uh, I have uh, incorporated uh, with my research. So, customer khadi needs uh, uh, needs its repositioning the proper. Utilization of space, proper lighting, location. So if your time is up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. This is it. We'll go to the question answer section now. Okay. Sure. So yeah. So you after you uh, right after you stopped sharing, we can just ask you a few questions. Not getting the point. attendees are also free to uh, yes, ask sure. questions. Do you have any? Can you stop uh, screen sharing? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes, Super. So yeah, that was uh, very refreshing, Simrandeep. I was taken. I was taken aback by the very strong visual that you showed us. Uh, you know the difference between the two shops. This was a very strong yes, visual. Yes, the Khadi shop and the modern contemporary shop, and it was you know obviously one would think twice before going into uh, you know a shop with a poor display. Uh, but then having said yes, that, you know, personally, I, I've always been very fond of khadi, you know, it keeps you cool in summer mm -hmm. and keeps you warm in winter. Yes, ma'am. And for some reason, I don't know why it, I mean, you, I know you've plotted all the reasons why it's not popular. And uh, I just wonder why we don't look at it, uh, look at khadi uh, in a different way. And I think Banastali as a university promotes the, you know, wearing of khadi, which is, I think, yes. just wonderful. A lot of efforts have oh. been made, ma'am, by the government itself. But still, you know, in Haryana and Punjab, I have visited most, you know, all of the stores here. You know, the in the small villages, uh, there are big nalas outside the store, and everywhere there is a dust uh, in the store. So this is the main reason people are not getting attracted towards it, okay. because you know the other foreign brands they are they have captured market so nicely. <laughs> there are celebrities to move them. Yes, Khadi is promoted uh, by celebrities as well, but only it is limited to the ramp shows and, you know, the big pictures and the elite classes. But yeah. when we again talk about the cost of Khadi, it is expensive in terms of cost and there is very less variety because of the unique texture of it. There is very limited and, you know, uh, we cannot uh, uh, play with Khadi in terms of designing as well. So great that is one perspective. Okay, there's a question in the yes. question box which says, What effort are you personally are you doing personally to enhance Khadi? Are you yes. wearing Khadi, uh, for example? Are you wearing Khadi today? Yes, ma'am. This is the Khadi Kurta. Great. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, 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 the person who's asked the question is Anil. Anil, are you happy with that one answer? That uh, Yes, she's wearing khadi for her presentation, which is wonderful. <laughs> okay, any other, any other, uh, any other question, or do you want to answer this question again? What effort are you personally doing to enhance khadi? Uh, personally, I have visited. You know, I have given uh, presentations. I have uh, done workshops with the khadi institutions and given them suggestions on how to promote khadi. And a booklet I have developed because this is my PhD thesis topic as well. And uh, it has, uh, you know, there is a store in Kurukshetra which uh, in which I have given my inputs to for the display and for all the because it was a, a newly built a store. So the lighting and everything everything has been you know discussed with the owners and i have certain inputs in that also okay okay wonderful uh, any other question from the people who are listening in or from the fellow presenters 
Uh, anything else coming in? Okay. No, ma'am. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, Go ahead. Hmm. Deepshika, do you have any, any little question for? Uh, I don't mind asking. <laughs> A quick uh, tip for the designers, what they can do yeah. for making khadi popular in teenagers. Uh, Ma'am, first of all, you know, designing according to the need of, you know, today's generation. Because when we visit to the stores, there are old designs, no color matching, no variety is there. You can only see in female part, you can only see the kurtas uh, with uh, some button paneling over there. And for the male, it is just shirts and pants or you can see the basket jackets. We uh, know it commonly. So uh, what in designing uh, in Jaipur, uh, I have already visited Jaipur also certain uh, several times. Yeah, but there are you know, some of you, but people need to adopt because Khadi institutions work on their own and every institution is different from them. Okay. So there is not a something centralized thing that, uh, you know, you can make designings according uh, to uh, one pattern. Everybody has their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, they have their own perspective and the Khadi itself, you know, uh, when we talk about the rural areas and uh, the urban areas, the of Khadi is also, you know, very less in uh, rural areas as well as in the uh, urban areas. The stores we have, I live in Digar. Uh, okay. So we have stores that are very well equipped, very well furnished, all everything is fine. But when you go to the rural side, so all the, right, uh, uh, Simardeep, I'll have to yes, stop you there. So. Yeah. yeah sure. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, okay. So next up, next up we have Nitanshi. Uh, Nitanshi will uh, speak to us about the role of consumer perception on genderless fashion in deconstructing gender stereotypes in Indian society. So a little about her, she's a fashion design student at United World Institute of Design, Ahmedabad. Okay, Nitanshi, just a little bit for you. You know, I had an intern who worked with me for six months from your college. This was uh, during the COVID years. So good, I just remember that. So I said, I must mention this. Okay, so over to you. Uh, should we, should you, uh, do you want to share screen? Should we say your time starts now after you put up your screen? Yeah, great. So good morning. Uh, I'm from UID. Uh, my mentors were Taruna Vasu and Dr. Makalaya. Uh, my topic is role of consumer perception on genderless fashion in deconstructing gender, gender stereotypes in Indian society. So uh, India has, has similarities in the silhouettes in their past. When we look at their silhouettes, they have, they have dhotis that both the genders wore. Uh, wore. But as, the, uh, as a society got modernized, the silhouettes become more con confined to their genders. Uh, uh, even the Indian crafts do not differentiate over the genders because anyone can wear bandhani, ikat, and leaves. Uh, and the <coughs> problem is when uh, we talk about genderless clothing, it is taken as the uh, clothing for LGBT community. It, uh, uh, rather than it should be considered as a way to way to implement gender equality. Uh, and also, the need for the research was that it has become more of a feminine uh, revolution rather than being for both the genders. Uh, the, so there is a need to understand the psychology behind this perception of genderless clothing. Uh, I came up with some literature reviews and uh, identified some gaps and wanted to inculcate in my research. Like I wanted to more about consumers uh, regarding the gen genderless markets and uh, uh, So the main object of the study was to examine the issues of the consumer perception of genderless uh, fashion in India. My methodology includes uh, random surveys, literature reviews, and text analysis of the, in the context of Indian society. Uh, genderless fashion is, is not treated as an article, but as a basis of gender identity according to Indian society. 
people are not ready to accept clothing as per their individual personality but they wear it as per their gender although women have got theorized judging them when they wear a, a pant while a man wearing curved sleeve shirt will be judged more so uh, this research will help understand this clearly as per the research tools used and it will depend on the uh, validation of the response by the people and the sample size is uh, small due to the lack of time uh my research design includes descriptive research through quantitative and qualitative uh, analysis surveys were used with both the closed ended questions and open ended questions my sample uh, was the consumers of india from the north india uh, from uttar pradesh rajasthan haryana and delhi uh, they were 8200 all the genders were included their age group was 18 to 30 and the consumers were basically from non creative fields to have less exposure towards uh, non towards creative fields towards fashion and prints um, so as per the uh, survey i uh, found that according to them the gender the fashion is more based towards gender uh, as as compared to the other commodities like furniture like accessories digital gadgets they are less uh, less confined to gender uh, when asked to the reason of their choice of article uh, they have a variety of responses some say fashion and lifestyle accessories are made according to the body types of uh, different genders while some think uh, that it's their uh, personal choice uh, what to wear which come which uh, silhouette to wear what fit to wear so it's according to their comfort then they were asked that uh, what they think uh, generalist fashion is and it came up with thoughtful responses from them uh, according to most generalist clothing in, uh, is by choice regardless of gender color and design or silhouette some takes this to the gender equality and uh, they also stated some laws uh, that are made for gender equality and it's their right to choose what to wear uh when they were asked if they own any trousers or skirts the response were quite predictable because uh, 99% of the respondents uh, own the trousers but only 37.5% own skirts and it's it's just the female population that owns skirts um i i showed them these pictures and asked them what uh, what is the percentage of the weirdness of these pictures so the picture at my left is a uh, is uh, pleasant to uh, 71.9% of the people while the picture at my right is clear to only is a uh, is weird for 25% of people so they think uh, wearing a trouser for a girl is uh, normal and uh, wearing a skirt for a boy is uh, not normal Nitanshi, your five minutes are over. So accordingly, proceed. Yes, ma'am. I'll just quickly go to the conclusion. So the most fashion-active age group thinks that their personality and choice are more crucial in clothing than their gender. They have the realization that their way of clothing depends on how society would accept. They have been seeing things for years and. this is what they want to see ahead even if their own minds believes that uh, they want to wear something that is comfortable for them but still they wear something that they have been seeing for years this case is not similar for both the both the genders male and females females are free freer to wear whatever they want to it is less eyes are judging them when they wear a pant while men are more confined to the uh, to what they look at society uh the basis of everyone's clothing is comfort and personal style be any garment people do have this notion that they will wear it only if it's comfortable to them and belongs to their personal style um uh, this is the research poster i also created for this that's it thank you okay we are now open for questions for nitanshi
I, I don't see any questions in the question and answer or chat box. Um, anyone wants to go? I, I just, of course, as, as always, I have one or two, but I'll go last. Anyone? Other panelists, you are also free to ask questions. Okay, so uh, on your slide, I saw I saw Jakarta on your slide. What was that on one of the Jakarta? You had, what was that about? Yeah, it was a uh, it was a article from a from an author. I did some uh, article reviews. So your voice is breaking. Hello. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to share the screen. Don't worry about it. Just don't share the screen. Just, just, uh, I, I was curious that, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was a literature review. Uh, so I just read, read that article and it came out with what gap I can. Oh, it was part of your literature review. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I just, you know, I didn't catch that because you went very quickly on the slide. So I didn't catch that. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, then yeah, you can stop screen sharing. Uh, yeah. I have another question. What is MCQ? A multiple choice question. Okay. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I was just thinking that it'll be some, you know, some dramatic thing. I didn't realize it would be okay. such a simple explanation. Okay. So then my third question for you was that currently, uh, what are the what are the current cultures in the world where men wear skirts? So that is the thing. Uh, right now, it's just the LGBT community that try to uh, explore themselves and they wear stuff like that but if uh, a man if a man who is not who is your voice is breaking again hello yeah yeah so right now there is no culture that wears that allows men to wear skirts but in the previous times if we see if we research about the previous times so there were uh, people who wore dhoti in India and uh, lungis has been a culture in India. So that is the thing due to the modernization. I don't think so right now. Men are so much confident about wearing lungis and skirts outside in public. That is what I wanted to say. Now. Yeah. Okay, Nitanshi, you might want to look at uh, Scottish Scottish communities. They still wear skirts. Yeah, they dance uh, now. Yeah, the you might, you might want to see Jigme Sangme Vanchuk. Yes. He's, he, they would still wear skirts. And... And you're right. All the uh, all, um, all the uh, you know all all the men in South India wear the dhotis, but how do they wear them? They wear it at half half mast. They put the lungi up. Up, yeah. You know? So uh, I I'm from a South Indian family. So my 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 cousins and my father beautifully they would kick their you know we call them veshtis uh, in some uh, in Tamil Nadu and in uh, Karnataka we call them veshtis and in uh, uh, Mundu, I think in, in Kerala it is Mundu. And so, so beautifully these men will just give one little side kick and then that the waist beautifully comes up and it becomes a skirt. A very beautiful I, I, I've always thought how beautiful that is. Yeah, that's a very beautiful thing in that culture because uh, they are still continuing that thing. But if we see it in Northern India, they have modernized themselves so they just don't go back to their dhoti, dhoti because earlier I remember if I research about it people used to wear in ceremonies those dhotis and style with kurtas but that doesn't happen anymore much ma'am uh, her time is up her time is up okay yes thank so you you're doing a great job of time keeping otherwise i would have just you know <laughs> I continue to engage her in conversation wonderful so we uh, dipshika we move to the next yes ma'am okay great so we now have uh, anushka anushka will be talking to us about sanitary waste uh, disposal and alternatives. Uh, Anushka is a product design student from Arch. That's wonderful, Anushka, that you you are representing your college at your college event. It's great. So a special welcome. And uh, you are a final year craft and accessory design student. You're passionate about learning new things. Wonderful. So good to uh, hear that. And you're fascinated by glass, mirrors, and illusions. And you love to experiment with different materials, while exploring your passion for art. That's great. So that's over to you now. Thank you. 
I would just still share my screen. Is it visible? Yes, you can start. Okay. This. A very good morning. I am Anushka Chaudhary, a craft and exercise design student from Arch College of Design and Business. Today, I will be talking about on sanitary waste, uh, waste management, and its alternatives in India. Starting with it, menstruation, the onset of physiological changes among females during adolescence still face many social and religious restrictions, which stops them from maintaining a proper menstrual hygiene. Across India, over 336 million people experience menstruation every year, and of those, 121 million of them still use disposable sanitary pads. And these pads take up to 500 to 800 years to decompose, posing a threat to environment as well as health hazards to the segregators. And they basically end up in landfills, choking up the pipelines. So the study focuses on developing a system to channelize the waste and use it effectively. This is how menstrual waste management is to be taken care of forward in India, according to the SWM rules 2016, but uh, it's not how it goes. The waste is still not segregated, uh, posing great health hazards and causing problems to the, the segregators. And these are the different uh, ways of uh, the, the, the alternatives to disposable sanitary pads. Uh, and Again, moving forward, these are the different ways of disposing uh, sanitary waste, uh, starting with the incinerator, which helps in burning the sanitary waste, and Sanico is a company which uh, converts the uh, used sanitary menstrual waste to plastic, which can be used as in, again, in, with, with the plastic industry and the paper industry. So, moving further, my study focuses on uh, understanding how the menstrual waste can be treated because still a lot of people in India use the disposable sanitary napkins. And after doing a, a data analysis of uh, around one, uh, 108 responses, it came out that 75% uh, of the total responses still use disposable sanitary napkins. And only a few of them have ever used an incinerator that counts to over 8.3%. After an, uh, other analysis, uh, I moved on to the experimental stage where I focused on uh, using the already available technology, that's the incinerator, uh, effectively. So, uh, because incinerators were not available to me in the closest proximity, or even if they were available, they were not in a working condition. So, I started experimenting uh, with the same at my home. And uh, starting with that, I started uh, you, uh, burning the unused sanitary napkins uh, using uh, matchsticks in the terracotta bowl and then sieved it. So when the, uh, then after uh, burning the unused sanitary napkin, I tried experimenting it the same with different brands to understand uh, the amount of ash produced which, with each of them, depending on the brand name, the size, the length of the uh, pads and its uh, expiry date as well. So uh, once the ash was obtained, I tried to experiment, uh, make a dye out of it. And these were some of the experiments, uh, but the results weren't satisfactory because of the, uh, because the ash uh, just ticked on to settle in the pores of the fabric. And uh, uh, once it gets washed out, the color fades away. And photos are clicked when the cloth is wet. Once it gets dried, they change the color as well. Moving further, uh, I tried to experiment it with the wood finishes as well, and trying with different permutations and combinations. And the results were some of the results were good, like the ash plus adhesive and ash plus varnish, giving a black uh, matte look and the black glossy look respectively. Hence, uh, these were the, some of the observations of, from the experiments conducted, uh, where uh, the, the adhesive one gave a, uh, a black matte look and uh, the uh, uh, varnish one gave a black glossy look. 
uh, once the experiments were successful with the used sanitary napkin, I moved on uh, using a uh, burning a used sanitary napkin at my home again uh, in a terracotta bowl. So these are the images of how it's gone. And this is the used ash. So uh, after that, uh, I have tested the uh, wood finishes and for different on different parameters such as scratch resistance, water resistance, heat, chemical, and adhesion. And these were the results obtained from them. So uh, further, the uh, the study, the study, the research paper focused on developing a system where the study proposes to uh, a system to properly manage the sanitary waste tapping it properly and then disposing it uh, separately in a dustbin, the, which then gets collected by the waste collection truck, which already has a separate uh, compartment for it. The segregated waste then goes to large scale incinerators uh, where the sanitary waste is incinerated at 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius, making the resultant ash uh, sterilized and safe to use. The ash further goes to the wood industries where the finish is applied to the decor products and the safety of the product is further ensured by applying the lacquer finish over it. Also talking uh, about its safety as uh, the menstrual blood is uh, safe and it doesn't Ashka, contain I any chemicals. keeping track of time. Yeah. It doesn't contain any chemicals and uh, it... Uh, even sorry the menstrual blood is safe to be uh, is safe and it doesn't have any bacteria in it uh, only until and unless uh, it, there's some menstrual disease also when the uh, pad is insulated at a temperature as high as 800 to say, uh, 1000 degrees celsius it uh, kills all the bacteria uh, even if it's a menstrual disease making it completely sterilized also it is recommended that uh, the uh, Asked uh, the finish to be used in the decor industries and not to be used for where the contact is the maximum so that it's socially ex acceptable and making it even further safe. And the further study focus, uh, focuses on getting the ash tested to check its toxicity level uh, to understand how it can be used further. Thank you. Perfect. You managed the time well. We nice. can start with the question and answer. Yes, I don't see any questions. Ah. Yeah. Great, I, I will have plenty, but I'm just waiting for everyone else to respond to this one because this is my area of work, you know? So, uh, Nothing in the chat box. I can see nothing in the chat box and I can see nothing in the question and answer. Mm. Okay, so hey, you can stop. And there is a question. Yeah, you there is a question. Oh, there's a nice question that's come in. Why did you start experimenting with burning? Uh, because uh, I didn't want to uh, incorporate new technology. Incinerators are all, already available to us and governments are promoting the incinerators in different schools and colleges and government institutions so i thought of using the available technology so that it can, the waste can be used further effectively so that's why i use that burning in the incinerator part itself okay okay um any uh one more uh some questions have why okay why did you start that is answered should it be popularized through ads uh anil what should be popularized through ads Can you type that again? Oh, recycling. Okay. Okay. The question is, should recycling be popularized through ads? It can be. The government can take the initiative to promote this because the, uh, during the, my course of research, I have been to different government institutions, different hospitals, schools, and colleges. And uh, only in the government institutions were the incinerators available. Even if they were available, uh, they were not in a working condition and no one was uh, the, the, taking care of them. So it's just there for the sake of being there because the government launched the program in 2018 to put up the vending machines and incinerators. Okay, just to just to add a little bit about incinerators. Well, uh, it, it, this is not my presentation, so I shouldn't be saying too much. But uh, the problem with incinerators is that 
uh, often the low cost incinerators, uh, once the, the pads are, uh, you know, a, a small low cost in incinerator would be about say this size, you know, say about eight hmm. inches. And it can take three pads, three, three menstrual pads at one time. It takes 45 minutes to burn up and it completely, you know, it smokes up the bathroom, it smokes up everything, and there's a very bad acrid plastic smell. So that's the reason why incinerators have not particularly been popular. So I have a question though for Anushka. Uh, what is What was the profile of all the respondents? Because I read your paper and you said that you had, uh, you had, uh, I forget now, how many respondents were there? 108. 108. 108, right? So uh, what was the profile of all your respondents? I mean, you know, what kind of economic group, what kind of, you know, just curious to know that. They were from different age groups, from different professions. It wasn't particular to students. They were housewives as well, working women, students. And it was circulated all over the people. Okay. So and it was, were through some... a, it was through a Google form? Yes, yeah, it was through a Google, Google. form. So that means that the respondents need to be smart to answer your questions on Google. So that is your sample. That's fine. You can just, you know, you can narrow down on a, on a sample and narrow down on a method. So that's great. Okay, then the Nirbhaya pad, wh why was the waste so much, so much higher than the rest in the, in the Nirbhaya pad? Because it was expired. It was an expired expired date pad. It produced a lot of smoke while burning as well. And the ash content was also very high. way higher than all the other pads. That's the, that's the unfortunate part about uh, disposable pads because 90% of the material is plastic. It's plastic, yeah. And the material itself is wrong. So you can't make a wrong wrong product right by incinerating. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very complex, it's a very, very complex thing because it's like, uh, you know, I always give the example of Maggi noodles. We know that Maggi noodles is bad for us, but we still eat it anyway. And, uh, you know, similarly, for example, cloth pads are good. I mean, I promote cloth pads, so I'm saying that. Cloth pads are good, but then, you know, convenience is what everybody wants. So, uh, any other question? Keep working on this area and keep in touch with me because it's interesting to yes, know. And uh, my question was, you, you, why did you use the tie and dye and all that thing? What was the reason? You were looking at how to use the waste, is it? That was the... Yeah. So, you're huh. looking at different... Because Different, uh, different ways to use the face. So I finally came up with a wood finish because wood finish worked well with the uh, uh, by adding the substitute materials like adhesive and varnish. So the finally a wood finish was developed through it. Okay, ma'am, I'll have to interrupt. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for that. And now we move on to uh, Sudeep. Uh, okay, Sudeep is a professor at the Maharaja Sayajirao University of Baroda. And he's looking at Dimasa culture, costume and jewelries with special reference to the Busu festival. Am I pronouncing Busu festival correctly, Sudip? Yes, 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 ma'am. Okay. And uh, I, while, while I was reading your paper, I kept thinking about Dimahasao and half long because I've been there and it's a wonderful okay. area. And I've been okay. to a very remote village uh, near half long called Mohor. So I was looking at, you know, all the references and- Okay getting very happy with the memories of my trip to okay Africa. so over to you yeah so do you want to start that's let great. me yeah 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 uh let me share the screen yeah yeah You are unable one to share, second. is there? Yeah, yeah, one second, uh, I'm not able to. Yeah, one second. No problem. So while uh, while he's, he's uh, sorting this out, I just wanted to ask the other participants, uh, which cities are you logging in from? Uh, uh, Nitanshi, for example, where are you, where are you speaking to us from? I am from Kanpur, but basically right now I'm in Delhi. I'm, in I'm doing internship at Sukhret Dhi. So. Okay. Then Anushka, you're speaking to us from? Jaipur. Uh, Jaipur. And Simardeep? 
Okay, uh, Shefali, you're speaking to us from where? Okay, they're also off. Um, Sudeep, you can you can email email us yeah. and then we can uh, share. Do you want to do that? Do you I want don't to know email? why. I don't know why this is not uh, showing the option. Uh, one second, ma'am. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Sudeep, do you want me to yeah. share your yeah. presentation? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, one second. I have changed it a little bit. So I... Uh, record it for okay. Yeah, take your time. Okay, take okay, okay. Uh, okay, you can uh, share this because I'm not able to. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so can I start? Yeah. yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. So basically, uh, I have chosen this uh, Dimasa uh, culture for the reason that uh, it is in my district only. Mem knows uh, the district called uh, Kachar, and Dimasa is also known as Kachara, Kacharis. Okay, so there was a uh, king, even we have the uh, you know uh, kingdom called uh, Kashpur. Okay, Mem might know about that. So basically, I was uh, you know brought up in uh, Haflong. Um, and been to that place, a very beautiful place. And this uh, particular tribe, uh, Dimasa, is very dominating over there. So I have been uh, looking at them. I have been, you know, uh, uh, you know, grown up with them and I have seen their culture, which actually, you know, uh, inspired me to uh, uh, look at uh, more into their culture as well as the jewelries. And I'm a uh, uh, art historian and uh, as a student of aesthetics, I used to look at uh, these things a different uh, way. Okay. So, uh, you know, the, the thing which uh, captivated me is the design motifs, uh, which is very much similar to the prehistoric art of uh, uh, Europe. Okay, so uh, if you are aware of the prehistoric uh, uh, site like uh, uh, Altamira, Lasco, and uh, uh, you know other sites where from where we have different different artifacts, which is very much similar to that. So that became uh, very interesting to me, and that's why I thought of uh, doing a small project on the jewelries. And costumes of the uh, tribe Divasa. So, uh, so okay, uh, I should start with the PPT. So, this uh, um, we know that uh, India is known for its uh, diversities and different communities, where each and every community has their own individual customs and culture. We know that about. So, in northeastern India, especially in Assam. We find many many tribes, uh, you know, and uh, most of them are suppressed. As I've said, even I have, uh, you know listed some of the important tribes, but as I've said that the Dimasa one is very, very dominated. And that's why the, uh, you know, place uh, uh, has changed the name. Okay, now it is called Dimahasao. Okay, so yeah, so that's what. Okay, can you go to the next slide? I'll move fast because I think that we don't have much time. Yeah, can you change the slide, please, Dipshika? Yes. Yeah, so the Dimasa of NC Hills, NC Hills means North Kachar Hills, being aggregate people, you know, celebrates various agricultural festivals in different ways and uh, uh, different times. And uh, you know that in Assam, there are, you know, this, uh, there is this uh, festival Bihu. So Bishu is actually Bihu only, but they call it Bishu. Okay, ma'am. So that is the uh, thing. So among the festivals of Dimasa, so Bishu is, or Bishu or Bihu. We call it, uh, which is a, a joyous uh, harvesting festival, and it is supposed to be the most important community festival of Dimasa. And they used to perform that in an open place, like a huge uh, ground and all. So the festival is usually celebrated in the month of January, that Bogali Bihu, uh, which uh, uh, you know uh, celebrated in Assam of January, when all sorts of work of the Zoom 
cultivation or being is completed. In this occasion, the Dimasa people put on their traditional costume and ornaments and dancing in a group, which is very, very uh, you know, attractive. Their colorful costumes and ornaments are you know, very, very attractive. So we have this uh, first uh, uh, you know, ornament, this is called uh, Kamauta. This is basically the uh, earrings, which is quite large in size. And the material I'm talking about is, uh, is called now they have different uh, material also like the alloys and the uh, zinc, uh, this thing. But this one is very, very uh, interesting for the reason that it is not just a jewelry. These are just not just a jewelry because they used to wear them in that Vishu festival because it has a religious significance with it. Okay, and uh, I'll show you some other uh, uh, um, uh, this uh, ornaments uh, which has this magical spells also. So if you uh, even if you look at this uh, particular uh, uh, jewelry, this is called Kadu. Kadu, we know Kadu. Okay. But the you know design motifs which has been used in this uh, you know Kadus are very much similar to the uh, prehistoric design. If you, uh, you if you are aware of, as I said, because uh, you know I have come across uh, one uh, small artifact which is known as the Women of Wizenboy. So that is the artifact which has been excavated from Buzibu, which has the similar kind of uh, patterns. Okay, so moving forward, we have other uh, jewelries also like the Chandarwal. Okay, Chandarwal is again very, very uh, important jewelries and uh, uh, one should wear this in this, uh, uh, you know, Vishu festival. And the other one, which is called Pual, this is again very important for the reason that it has this, uh, you know, red beads with the, some metal uh, uh, balls uh, the, in it. Uh, which is, because your presentation yeah. took a little time, we'll have to hurry up with yeah, this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm almost, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the fuel I'm talking about is very important for the reason that it has uh, the quality to get rid of evil eye. So that's what I was saying that it is not just a jewelry, it has some magical spells. In it. And this, these are the modern jewelries, uh, which now they are, uh, you know, uh, they, now they are making. Okay, so the, uh, you know, earlier one was the original, these things, and these are the modern one. So though this looks similar, but they are not. And if you look at the modern jewelries, that actually goes very well with the uh, their uh, you know costume which they used to wear in that particular busu uh, you know busu or bishu or bihu uh, festival. Okay, so these are the modern ones. And as I've said that you know this fuel element is also incorporated with the modern uh, this thing because to have that uh, power to get rid of the evil eye. Yeah, I think that was the last slide, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So I think I have makeup in. Uh, uh, time. We'll take okay. questions now for yeah. another yeah. minute or so. Yeah. Anyone, anyone with questions for Sudip? Sudip, where are you speaking to us from? Uh, from Assam. Silchar only. Yeah. Silchar. You see, yeah. Silchar. Wonderful, wonderful. Northeast is, you know, Northeast is dear to me. Because I had the opportunity okay. of going to some. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy that you have been to these places. Sorry? <laughs> I'm happy that you have been to these places, the Hafla. Uh, Tura, you know, Tura and Meghalaya, and you know. Okay. And now I'm in Meghalaya, ma'am, and I have to Shillong. You're in Shillong. Okay, great. Yeah. Great, great. And I have to. Uh, you are with NIFT in Shillong, is that right? Yeah, NIFT Shillong. Yeah, I'm assistant okay. professor there. Yeah, in the, the fashion design department. Okay, uh, my immediate thought is that, you know, it's so important to document some of these, uh, you know, this, the, the importance of documenting traditional craft, traditional jewelry, traditional clothes, you know, it can't be stressed enough. Because uh, when I, when you just look at, you know, the Amazon and the Flipkart and, you know, they just make everything and everybody the same. So uh, I'm not really, I'm just making a comment really. So some years ago, if you, in, in, in my city in Udaipur, when you looked at young people, you could think that, okay, maybe this child is from Bombay. Now everybody's wearing the same clothes with the same jeans that are torn in the same places. And, you know, so it's it's wonderful what you're doing. The uh, documenting, documenting yeah, yeah. some of these things. Actually, I have, I have taken the uh, uh, one basti uh, called Sampari Disa. Hmm. Sampari, that is in Haflomondi. So I have uh, taken that village uh, for my case study, and uh, these images I have uh, only taken from uh, from the villages. Okay, so this is uh, the original uh, this thing, not uh, from a shop and anything, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Half Long is a beautiful place, and I'm I'm hoping that one day you'll have a museum there with, you know, with all these yeah, things. Yeah, hope Looking so. Man. That 
Okay. Uh, so that's great. So anything else you want to tell us? Because we have like, you know, another minute or so. Any Anything else you feel that, you know, you should have said in the presentation that you didn't get a chance to say? Because... Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I was talking about this, uh, 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 you know, tribe, which is uh, Dimasa. So Dimasa means the, uh, you know, uh, children of the big river. You might know the Brahmaputra. So they consider themselves as the descendant of the Brahmaputra. Mm. Okay, and they, they said that we are the indigenous people of this place. So that's how uh, the uh, we we'll have to you know. stop now. I'm okay. sorry, we have the next session. Okay, uh, in a while. Okay. So yeah. are we supposed to just uh, wind up quickly now? Did yes, yes, ma'am. Time yes. for us to wind yes. up. Yes. Okay. I was hoping, uh, Sudip, that you would you know wear some of the jewelry, you know, and be in line with the gender neutral uh, speaker. Okay. <laughs> the, speaker, yeah? the problem is I time. don't have. I don't have this jewelry right now. I was thinking about that because uh, when uh, next time. the other <laughs> for next time, great. Okay. So we have to we have to uh, uh, listen to Deepshika because she is the timekeeper and she has to move on into another session. So I'd like to thank Shifali. Uh, uh, wait, thank you, ma'am. Simardeep, Nitanshi, Anushka, and Sudeep. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. And thanks to Deepshika too for managing this very well. I've had a wonderful morning talking to all of you. And Thank do you. keep in touch. And then, you know, we'll meet at some other spot some someday. And keep up all the good work. It's just wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Should we just leave the room? Yes, please. Okay. I... Thank you.